I would love if you could tell us a little bit more about your mindset around excelling. So, mm. you know, you had this, the first experience of what it meant to be someone who could really thrive and do so well at something at such a young age. Um, what does excelling mean to you and why do you think it's something that you love so much? I think a certain personality type, it's really addictive. And for me, I mean, it does float. It used to more often um, than it does at present because I've learned to, to manage it. Um, but I feel like it's something that's ingrained and always has been ingrained in my DNA, um, wanting to ensure that I did everything to a very, very high standard. But I think so much comes with all the the success of, of being a high performer, but more often than not, people don't talk about what the opportunity cost of that is. And sometimes that success and that level of excellence can be debilitating. And I think for me, in many aspects of my life, I found that to be true. I mean, I used to, at school, growing up, you know, do cross country and athletics day. And I wouldn't just win cross country and I wouldn't just win overall at athletics. I won every single event in the entire <laughs> athletics. So, I mean, every long jump, high jump, shot put, discus, every distance, short distance, long distance running. And I put that bar and I put that expectation on myself as a young person. Fortunately, I didn't have parents who were pushing me into anything. They kind of just gave me the freedom to be like, yeah, whatever, go off. But that was self-imposed. And I really did need people around me and I think my dad was a really good influence on me um, in trying to ground me and saying okay mm -hmm. well you know as you move through life and you know as well as I do you're not always going to win and that's okay but it's learning to like come to terms with okay if you fall short what have you learned in that journey and how will that inform what you do moving forward so I got comfortable with losing um, but I never really viewed it then as, you know, when I was moving through that process mm -hmm. as a loss. And people talk often about, like, the learnings through different different failures in life. And that was a pretty difficult switch for me to um, align with early on. But I think it really did start with my dad because he always used to say if I came back and I lost the game of football, it was something I couldn't get over, like, within a reasonable time period. I mean, most people take a loss on the chin maybe give it the night and then the next day they're ready and they're off back to work. But I would analyze absolutely everything. And my old man used to just say, and he still does, funnily enough, like the other team's got to win every now and again, you know? <laughs> and I was like, you know what, that's valid. <laughs> like realistically, that's how life works. You can't, it wouldn't be very fun if the All Blacks won every single World Cup or, you know, whatever it may be. That's the joys of life. That's the joys of sport is the perspective that you gain when you go through those lulls because otherwise the victories aren't as sweet. So I got more comfortable with that. 